all right uh, so good morning students so we'll just continue with uh, the further topics of two terminal devices okay so the previous 3 to 4 sessions we had discussed about the different or uh, you know specialized diodes like short key diode tunnel diodes hmm. photo diodes and also some other special type of uh, you know semiconductor devices in the few sessions okay so today we will be discussing uh, on solar cells okay uh, we have uh, already studied about photodiodes the principle and the working of it okay so solar cells in principle they are you know almost similar to that of the photodiodes okay because you know uh, solar cells are uh, basically photovoltaic devices wherein the input is photon and the output will be in the form of a voltage appearing across the output terminals okay so the slide shows you different types of you know solar cells it could be a single unit monolithic or poly you know crystalline solar cells okay now you know the point comes why solar cells okay so when we talk about the uh, energy sources we can briefly differentiate the energy sources into two types renewable or and non renewable energy sources okay all of us know about it so renewable energy sources are the ones which are you know infinite okay they can be produced or at least uh, you know they are uh, what you can say available for uh, thousands of years okay for example solar energy uh, we know that still okay sun is going to exist for uh, at least a million years okay so we won't be having any problem with respect to the solar energy similarly uh, you know the biomass okay it is infinite right okay and the wind energy and the geothermal energy and also the uh, you know the the tidal or uh, the hydropower energy so all these come under renewable energy sources uh and the second type of energy sources are non renewable energy sources which you know we have been trying to extract a lot in the last century okay uh, last you know one or maybe two centuries as such so the first thing that comes to our mind when we talk about non renewable energy sources is oil okay Uh, for example you know all all this petrol diesel and all they all come under non renewable energy sources because they exist in the earth's crust but sooner or later they are going to become extinct okay you know experts say that within 40 to 50 years the petrol or the diesel uh, is going to exhaust okay so because of that we are trying to search for some Uh, alternative energy sources like uh, you know solar energy and the electricity hmm? electrical energies similarly just uh, like oil okay there is uh, one more non renewable energy source called as coal which we have been using extensively uh, you know over the past uh, 200 years or so okay and uh, you will be surprised to know that even today india is prominently dependent almost 60 to 70 percent dependent on coal energy okay that is the thermal energy for the generation of electricity then nuclear energy is also considered to be non renewable energy right because the nuclear elements they are not uh, abundant in the earth's crust sooner or later they are also going to become extinct okay uh and then finally it is the natural gas so all these come under non renewable energy sources now because of the scarcity arised due to the non renewable energy sources we have been forced to think about the renewable energy sources out of which solar energy it poses uh you know a strong contender right because of its abundant nature okay availability as such uh so you know just to discuss some of the important points on solar cells so what does a solar cell indicate a solar cell 
is nothing but a photovoltaic cell okay right it is nothing but a photovoltaic cell wherein it primarily converts the energy of the light directly into electricity okay so in short we can say that there is a conversion of light energy to electrical energy as simple as that by the effect called as photovoltaic effect okay which is completely a physical and a chemical phenomena in fact it's a combination of physical as well as a chemical phenomena uh, again uh, it's it's a form of photoelectric cell what a solar cell which is defined as a device whose electrical characteristics such as current voltage or the resistance vary when exposed to light okay it is similar to that of a photodiode next individual solar cell devices can be combined to form modules otherwise known as solar panels all of us have seen how the solar panels look um, you know look like you know they are just similar to uh, you know thin wafers okay which are almost transparent right then uh, the common single cell silicon solar cell can produce a maximum open circuit voltage of approximately 0.5 to 0.6 volts okay but it all depends on the incident photonic energy okay but normally the output in the form of voltage that is being produced by a unit solar cell is not that encouraging it is very very small right it is due to that reason that we are trying to you know combine so many solar cells okay and then converting it in the form of a huge solar panel so that collectively we can get some significant amount of current out of it okay what about its operation the operation of a basic photovoltaic cell can be described in three simple steps the first one is absorption of light energy absorption of the photons which results in the generation of electron and hole pairs okay or they are also called as excitons okay the other name for electron and hole pair is exciton then the second sequential step is the separation of charge carriers of opposite types once the electron and hole pairs do get generated then they are supposed to be separated okay electrons will be moving to uh, you know one end and the holes will be moving to the other end okay and then once they are separated then the separate extraction of those carriers to an external circuit okay so basically it's a sequence of three very simple steps so we'll try to understand these three steps you know pictorial in the next slide the most commonly known solar cell is configured as a large area of pn junction made from a silicon okay so this is just an additional information the other possible solar cells okay which are commercially available they are usually of organic material or dye based okay they are called dye sensitized solar cells Uh, nowadays we have some specialized solar cells which are made up of perovskite okay which have become very popular huh? you can just google it out what do you mean by a perovskite okay it's it's a compound material hmm? and finally uh, very recently there are some solar cells called as quantum dot solar cells although they are not uh, you know commercially available but in the research labs and all we do have quantum dot solar cells which claim uh, to have a higher efficiency okay so let us try to understand the functioning of a solar cell so you know that's a very simple uh, you know description okay pictorial description so what do we have here all right so uh, the input is solar radiation okay you can see that you know a very happy sun <laughs> you know so we get uh, enough amount of solar energy from our sun okay due to which you know we should consider ourselves to be very very fortunate okay so there is absolutely no scarcity in terms of solar energy all right 
so whenever light falls on a particular typical solar cell which is made up of a p and n junction material okay please understand this top layer is of n type silicon and the bottom layer is of p type silicon and in between n and p type you know that it is of depletion layer so this yellow colored structure indicates it is depletion region all right so now when photons are incident uh, they transfer the photonic energy to the crystal okay basically the silicon pn junction now at the junction there will be electrons and hole pairs or excitons that are generating once the electrons and holes get generated the electrons move to one end of the structure and the holes try to move to the other end of the structure so that this actually results in a potential difference i repeat okay the accumulation of electrons and the holes at different ends of a pn junction results in a potential difference this resulting potential difference in turn is responsible for the flow of current okay so whenever the current flows there will be a voltage getting generated okay so that is nothing but your photovoltaic effect okay as simple as that now the voltage which appears externally depends on mainly the intensity of the incident light right if the strength of the photon is higher then naturally the voltage which is generated at the output will also be higher okay but however there is a limitation okay there is a physical limitation for the conversion of solar energy into its corresponding uh you know the the electrical energy okay we'll be looking at it because you know we cannot say that a solar cell is 100% efficient okay what do you mean by 100% efficiency in general okay for example you know if this is a particular pn junction and assume that you know there are 100 photons that are incident right then we cannot say that all these 100 photons generate 100 electron hole pairs no it is not so okay some of the energy gets wasted right and it doesn't result in 100% efficiency no okay usually the efficiency of solar cells ranges from you know 10% to at the max you know 25 to 30 percent 25 to 30 percent okay uh, you know if uh, if you are able to obtain an solar efficiency of about 25 percent that means that particular solar cell is extremely efficient okay fine so uh, the cost of a solar cell also increases with respect to its efficiency lower the efficiency naturally the cost of the solar cell will be less higher the efficiency the cost will be more okay so that should be your understanding all right so that's a uh, simple um <coughs> you know depiction of how the electrons and the hole pairs will be generated so it's it's a very simple animation okay so i suppose you can uh, observe the animation students okay so what is happening initially the light is getting illuminated the photons will reach the structure and they'll just transfer the energy due to which the electron hole pairs will be generated okay and uh, these generated electron hole pairs will move to the edges and then finally there will be a uh, yes um, yeah mm, okay so now you know there is uh, recombination and then finally you'll be getting a current out of it okay so a potential difference will always exist okay 
So this is a schematic of charge collection by solar cells. Light transmits through the transparent conducting electrode creating electron hole pairs which are collected by both the electrodes. Okay. All right. Uh, so what are the different types of solar cells which are available? Okay. Now, you know, we have solar cells since almost 30 to 40 years. Okay. They are not, uh, you know, very new devices also, right? We have been hearing about solar cells since almost four decades. So we have uh, solar cells being differentiated in three types. Uh, so the first generation wafer based silicon solar cells these are either monocrystalline solar cells or polycrystalline okay i'll be showing the pictures of monocrystalline as well as polycrystalline how they can be differentiated right but they come under first generation silicon based solar cells okay then you know people just found that or uh, they they felt that the first generation solar cells are slightly bulkier, heavier. So they just thought of uh, reducing their thickness, right? Uh, so then we obtained the second generation thin film based solar cells. Okay, please understand thin film solar cells is a new technology. Okay. Uh, <coughs> the production of thin film solar cells is comparatively costlier when compared to the traditional solar cells because just to f uh, manufacture or just to fabricate a very thin film you need an expensive fabrication unit okay so that is called thin film technology wherein the thickness of the films are in nanometers okay from micron to nanometers right so in thin film second generation solar cells we have some two to three types the first one is called amorphous amorphous silicon thin film solar cells then uh, another type which is of cadmium telluride cd stands for cadmium t stands for telluride okay so it's a compound based thin film solar cells which is having comparatively a better efficiency okay now you know currently this solar cell technology has gained a lot of importance due to the emergence of novel devices other than silicon people have just found that silicon is not the only material although it is available in abundance but it has some drawbacks also especially with respect to the conversion efficiency so people are you know now trying to uh, go for or uh, invent newer devices which have higher conversion efficiency okay so that comes under third generation new emerging technology so in the last decade this emerging technology has become very prominent so we have nano crystallized base crystal based solar cells polymer based solar cells these have gained a lot of significance okay. polymer based solar cells uh, you know with respect to fabrication they are quite inexpensive so that's that is its biggest advantage okay however their efficiency is low okay but fabrication cost is very very cheap okay so for applications wherein there is no need of very high efficiency there these polymer based solar cells have gained a lot of importance okay so in poly uh, then we also have some solar cells which are based on perovskite okay and then disensitized and then finally concentrated solar cells okay so there are many types available this is just you know one brief uh, introduction about different types of the solar cells all right now how do we differentiate between a monocrystalline polycrystalline and thin films well the slide clearly shows right so you can just observe see these are all the images which are being taken through microscopes okay all although they are you know colorized but still a powerful microscope can reveal the crystalline nature and the behavior okay so yeah, you know just go through this 
uh, with respect to efficiency temperature tolerance output lifetime durability all these three types differ right so it all goes with the application end user application what type of requirement does the end user need that uh, the manufacturers you know they manufacture that type of solar cell okay so just in terms of efficiency you can see that monocrystalline are 17 to 20% efficient polycrystalline 13 to 16% thin films they are uh, low efficient right however they are extremely thin they are not bulky okay they can be used in nanostructures right so each one of them has got its own individual advantages and individual drawbacks okay uh, so just some points on the uh, efficiency of a solar cell okay i just you know collected it from internet uh, no, uh, there may be some uh, newer uh, what you can say updations also okay but still a single pn junction crystalline silicon device are now approaching the theoretical limit power efficiency okay which is of 33.16 note down this point hmm? so that is the maximum solar cell efficiency that you can obtain which is being uh, denoted by a theoretical limit called as shockley quiser limit okay uh, you can just go through this mathematical derivation also it is available in the internet okay Uh, so shockley and quiser they framed this particular limit yeah? and they just told that in no way you can get an efficiency which is greater than 33% in a solar cell right so you know people are nowadays trying to achieve uh, the efficiency of around uh, you know 30 plus okay uh, you know this efficiency stands for only single pn junction crystalline okay then for a different structure which is called triple junction thin film solar cell again the efficiency of 13.6 has set a world record you know that is just for your information then uh, one set of researchers from you know these three laboratories which are in switzerland they recorded the efficiency of around 32.8 for a dual junction gallium indium uh, indium phosphide and gallium arsenic based solar cell okay so that was 32.8 percent efficient hmm? good so uh, there is one more example wherein they claim to have achieved 35.9 percent of efficiency well you know these are just for information sake now i just googled it out and and i just found some information about the progress of solar energy in our country okay see although these slides are not important with respect to your ias with respect to your syllabus but being electronic engineers okay future engineers uh, you should have some basic awareness about solar energy okay because you know this is actually the future hmm? in terms of energy right in 20 to 30 years solar cells uh you know will be replaced in every sector every sector okay so what does this chart state about well it says in india the solar electricity generation in billion units and year on year growth how it has happened okay well this is a positive news right if you just compare okay in the year 2012 uh, the solar energy generation was very less hardly 1.65 billion units okay so year on year year on year you can observe that there is you know a nice progress a nice increase in the solar in uh, electricity generation so currently you can observe that it's almost 50.1 billion units okay and in terms of increase also every year you can observe that Now, there is a nice improvement in the generation of electricity okay solar energy electricity we are talking about okay and this data is provided by mercom india 
okay so they provide these uh, statistics next uh, solar electricity generation month wise okay so again you can observe that when you compare the results of the financial year 2014 to 15 with that of 2019 to 20 you will again observe that there is a steady rise in the solar electric generation every month okay so that's a good news that's a positive news for our country hmm? but the point is is this rise sufficient to meet the energy needs of our country people right you know our population is not uh, small right okay we are 100 plus okay 100 crore plus population in a populated country so what about the energy needs is this sufficient okay let us just look at the next slide well uh, that's some uh, interesting information electricity generation by source by all type of sources uh, in the financial year 2019-20 so this is a very recent data available to us what does it state okay just look at it uh, the options are you know this gray colored shaded region indicates thermal energy generation okay in the sense you know we use coal to generate electricity okay right so it is you know conversion of coal energy into corresponding electricity so you can observe that almost 75% of the energy that uh, we get in the form of electricity is due to the thermal energy using non renewable energy sources right you know which is something uh, you know of a disappointment to us okay we still rely on coal energy in majority of the places right and what about other sources like uh, nuclear energy 3.3% okay it is still lesser right when compared to the thermal energy okay but over the years we are trying to improve okay improvise this percentage hmm? but still it is not that encouraging what about hydro okay using the energy of water okay hydrothermal plants 11% all right wind energy 4% not so encouraging solar energy hardly 3 to 4% right so when compared to the previous slides the previous slides told that the rise is good year on year but when compared to other renewable sources other uh, non renewable energy sources the solar energy the electricity generated is not that great so what does that mean that means there is a lot of scope for improvement okay there is lot of opportunity there are lot of job opportunity for youngsters especially in this energy sector you know people can do wonders okay in this right so there is a lot of scope especially in the solar sector uh then so this is one more chart which says the electricity generation in terms of percentage uh just for conventional and renewables okay conventional in the sense non uh, non renewables okay so that is non renewable energy sources so what does the information uh, state it says uh, for the year 2015 16 the electricity generation using conventional sources like coal you know petrol diesel nuclear energy it was 84.1 very disappointing right okay and uh, hardly we were able to generate 16% of the electricity by using renewable energy sources okay but after 5 years you know there is some good news and the good news is that we have reduced the usage of traditional or conventional energy sources and simultaneously we have increased uh, the usage of renewables okay so now it is 21 0.2 percentage so from 16 to 21 percent so there is a increase of 5 percent right although the increase is not that encouraging but still okay it's a positive note right 
so what are the major solar companies in india which are you know dominant these are not the only solar based companies but you know these are one among uh, the most important solar companies of our country you know tata power okay tata power solar then vikram solar and uh, we have some more uh, very good companies like you know moser bear solar company and uh, synergy electric okay they are also good in these solar panels okay so these are some of the examples of solar based companies in our country right you know recently um, uh you know the prime minister of our country has also stressed the importance of the solar energy okay and uh, you know many of the startups are based on uh, you know the solar energy conversion itself okay many startups have started in our country recently okay fine so that was all about the solar cells and the some uh, additional information about the solar energy in our country okay uh, the point is solar cell is based on photovoltaic principle itself photovoltaic effect wherein there is a conversion from light energy to its corresponding electricity right uh, the conversion is less the efficiency is less because of so many limitations okay the mathematics we are not trying to discuss here okay why is that the efficiency of a particular solar cell so small uh, it's uh, so we are not uh, going into the mathematical details okay all right so any doubts students